Hello, this is Greg Deckler for Enterprise DNA, and today we're going to be talking about on-premises data gateways. Now, we're going to go a little bit more in depth than just installing and configuring a data gateway, although we are going to end up doing that in this video, but uh, for kind of a little bit different reason. Um, so let's go ahead and get into it and hope you enjoy it. Okay, so I'm here in the Power BI service, and to get to my gate data gateways, I can click on the gear icon up here and then manage connections and gateways. You may see ellipses here depending on your view settings, but click on that and we see here we have our data sources, but what we're interested in are the on-premises data gateways. And you can see here that I have one cluster right here, PPU MVP DG, and this, uh, this is the data gateway cluster, okay? So there's actually nodes, I have multiple nodes in this cluster. So to see those nodes, I can checkbox this, and then go to details. And you can see here, I have two nodes in this gateway cluster. I've got this one, this PPU MVP DG, and a PPU MVP DG2. And this one is the primary, but let's say that this, we no longer need this. Maybe this uh, data gateway is already offline, which would be bad, depending on your gateway configuration. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But bottom line is we need to get rid of this uh, data gateway because we're, it's no longer needed. But if we click on this and then click on remove, it says, do you really want to do this? So we say remove, but you get this message here, please remove all other member gateways before removing the primary instances of this gateway cluster. So essentially what's going on here is that when I installed this, the first gateway that I installed into this cluster was on this device here. Uh, then I subsequently added a second node on this device here. And you can see here that they're both online uh, but I need to remove this and I want to make this one the primary essentially, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. So what we can do then is we need to basically take over this uh, gateway cluster. Uh, so the way we do this is a little, may seem a little extreme, uh, but what we have to do is we have to uninstall and then reinstall this data gateway and then choose the option to take over the gateway cluster. All right, so let's go ahead and get that started. So we're going to go to our apps installed apps. Here's our on-premises data gateway. And I'm going to uninstall it. Don't want to do that. Yes, I do. Next. All right, this is usually pretty quickly, pretty quick, but we'll uh, go in here and uh, take talk a take a little, little closer look at a few of these things. All right, so as I said, you know, here's our details. We have our settings, and I mentioned that, uh, hey, if your primary is offline, um, that that could be a very bad thing. Because by default, uh, the way that the power, the clusters work, it works in a failover mode. So essentially, the gateway cluster is always gonna use the primary gateway, um, unless it's not available or offline, and then it's going to fail over to the other nodes in the cluster. Unless you check this box right here, distribute requests across all active gateways in this cluster. So that will basically make it a random. So it'll just randomly choose one if that fail, if it fails, then it'll it'll choose the next one, the next one, et cetera. So if you if you click on this and you use this, then it's very important that you remove any any gateways that are no longer, any gateway nodes that are no longer active. Another one I want to talk about here is allow users to, uh, cloud data sources to refresh to this gateway cluster. Generally, that's a good idea to, to check that box because your users may be using, you know, some on-premises uh, gateway, gateway data sources, and but also some cloud data sources. But just remember that if you check this, then that gateway needs to have access to the those cloud data sources in order to refresh them. We'll go ahead and save that, and we'll check our status. Looks like that has been that's finished up and is uninstalled. So what now we're going to do is we're going to reinstall this gateway. So I've got my installer right here. Go ahead and fire that up. Accept the terms. Install. Yep, we do really want to install it. Yes, we really want to install it. All right, so let's get this is going to go for a little bit. Let's go back here and take a look at some more settings. Now there's three kind of levels of security that you have with data gateways. Um, the first one is uh, who can actually install a data gateway. So to access that, you turn on tenant administration for gateways, 
and you go to manage gateway installers. So you can see here that I'm allowed to install gateways. Uh, I don't have any other people in my organization at the moment, but if I did, I could type their names here and add them. And that just gives them permissions to install gateways uh, within the organization. Now, depending on you know, the policies of your organization, um, you know, you may allow just anybody to install a gateway, but for most enterprises, you're going to want to probably limit the amount of people within the people that are allowed to install gateways within Power BI. So that's always a good configuration for enterprises. Is to turn that is to turn that this toggle on to restrict it. OK, the second level that you have. Is your actual cluster itself. You can manage who's allowed to create connections. In that data gateway. As you can see here, I'm, allowed, I'm an admin, but I can also add users here. Same thing with email address, and I can allow them to create connections and also create connections and reshare those connections. So that's the third level is actually uh, essentially sharing the connection. So as you can see on my data sources, I have this Excel file right here. I can, actually, I can also manage the users, and this allows them to actually use the data connection that's set up. So three levels. You have who's allowed to install your gateway. You have who's allowed to create connections on your gateway. And then the third level is who's allowed to actually use those connections. All right, let's check our install here. Still going. So let's go back to here. And that's pretty much it as far as uh, the details and the settings and all of that sort of thing. This is all this is pretty much covers a vast majority of the, the tenant administration. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention about this load balancing feature, there are, and I'm not going to get into it in this video, but there are ways to limit uh, the, the, the gateway so that based upon like CPU or memory usage or, you know, basically how busy that gateway is, then essentially it'll check. Um, and if it's too, if the gateway is too busy, it'll move to the next gateway and choose that one um, and so on and so forth. Although if all the gateways, and this is done through a config file with your data gateway, it's in a special directory. Maybe I'll cover that in, a, in another video. All right, let's check this again. Close that. Go ahead and click on this and check the status. It should say partially online. That's correct. So it's partially online because one of the two gateways, as you can see here, it is offline at the moment. So if I would go back to here. Go to details, check online, it's online, check this one it is offline. So that's why it's saying partially online there. All right, there we go. It's going to run our configurator next. I need to put this in. Here, I think I've got that saved. There we go. Select my, get my password in here. I'm going to have to multi factor authenticate. I got my authenticator app that I'm using. Prove thumbprint. We should be good to go. Okay, here we go. So I'm installing this, and normally you'd pick register a new gateway on this computer, but this. What we're going to do is we're going to migrate, restore, or take over an existing gateway. Now, if I click on that and click next, there's my gateway cluster. That's the gateway that I'm going to take over. My gateway that I that I my gateway cluster that I've chosen. I only have one in my organization. This is the gateway that I want to take over, and I have to type in my recovery key. Now, this is why it's so important to remember to save or write down or whatever you want to do to make sure you always maintain uh, your recovery key. A lot of times, you know, it's, it's unexpected when you're installing a gateway. Uh, people don't expect that they're going to have to enter a password, basically a recovery key. And so they just make one up on the fly and then they lose it. And then, it, then you can't add gateways to the cluster. You can't take them over. You can't migrate them. It's a whole thing. Uh, I can't tell you how many customers I've seen that have gotten themselves into that situation. All right, so we're going to, since we know our recovery key, just no getting around it with uh, data gateways. Okay, so now you can see that our gateway is online, 
we're all set to go. So if we go back to the service now, let's refresh this page. Go back here, click here, click details. You can see now we have PPU, MVP, DG, primary, it's running on the system that we want now. We know we still have this one. You check the online, so it's, this one's offline. So at this point now, I can select this and I can remove it. And then what I can do then is if I, you know, let's say I'm replacing that, that uh, the old gateway that was the primary, then I could just go ahead and install it on a new, new computer, add it to the cluster. <laughs> You're gonna need your recovery key to do that uh, and you'll be all set. But so that's, uh, that's how you can es essentially take over a gateway in case your primary that you've, uh, you know, the machine that you installed first as your gateway is your primary for the gateway cluster. If you need to replace it, that is how you do it. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.